welcome to yet another insightful episode of the digital adoption show where we dive deep into topics shaping the modern workplace i'm your host for the episode today shreya shrasta working as a customer success manager at portfix in today's episode we'll explore five ways digital adoption is transforming the banking experience for the customers so yeah let's get started today i'm really excited to host dawn who is not just my customer at whatfix but really really special to be she is witty fun sensitive and above all a person with whom i can go on talking for hours formally or informally so welcoming dawn to our podcast welcome to the show dawn how does it feel everybody welcome I, I, you know i shrey i'm glad to be here i've got I brought my most effective mustache for for this start, so we're probably going to lose that. And I think that's a recordable moment, actually. So I'm just going to let it go. I decided to kind of disguise my identity at first, but I I think we can reveal it because it it's about to be revealed on its own. If you're ready, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for it. <laughs> okay. So there we have the original look of Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> now now that you have already revealed yourself don so to start with why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience at emirates bank okay my name is don mckindry and i am the it learning manager here at emirates bank i've been with emirates for 13 years so for younger people that's like a lifetime of working in a career and sometimes it feels that way But no, I work for an amazing team, an amazing group of people here at this bank, and that's why you stick around for 13 years, right? So we're always ever growing, like any business. You got to stay with it, and you got to be, you know, you got to be intuitive, and you gotta, you gotta go for the next most current thing because the world changes whether you like it or not. So you got to stay fit, right? And that's where we came to. What fix is our learning and development departments? way of saying we got to get current and we got to help our people out. So that's what I do with Ameris and what fix. I also do some of the other things like compliance requirements, making sure, you know, everybody's got to be legal. And that's my job. It's not the funnest job because people are like, ah, "Not you again." So I do the compliance stuff. I do our learning management system. and i am the manager of our instructional designers one of which is crucial to the success of our team not here today but she is amazing and she's why what fix works on ameris so that's mm-hmm. kind of me in ameris in a nutshell shreya what else okay so 13 years let me tell you one thing i'm i learn every day from you and this is one of the things that i've always admired that you take your work in a really fun way So oh, that's the reason. Even before we start off with all the grilling questions, I have a quick round of rapid fire for you. So okay. I hope you are all ready for those questions. Ready as I'm gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I can see a background right away, and this will make me ask this question for sure. I know you have a knack for Star Wars, and I remember asking this question in all of our meetings. So. If Star Wars character had a social media account, what kind of post do you think they would make? Ah, oh, Star Wars and social media. First, I'm pretty sure there'd be a lot of TikToks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know how they they do the dances. It's going to be like probably Star Trooper competitions. Who can do this mm-hmm. dance more? They're going to talk a lot about allergies. I mean, these. Oh. different planets have some different things and especially if you're like if you're wearing a helmet all the time let's talk about allergies and sneezing you know that's got to be a problem there's also well yoda probably has a myspace account which who has that but yoda probably does a lot of where's my cup i don't know if you do any of that where's my cup and if you don't know much about yoda and where he lives that could be really interesting and if you don't you you probably need to go to go watch some star wars to get that out but mm-hmm. uh, a lot of recipes <laughs> recipes you know grilling pork things like that so there there's just a ton of things that can be on there dating we won't go there on this call but <laughs> all kinds of social media god i yeah that's true i am really probably not much into star wars but i know you do have the idea 
So this will make me ask you another question, which I feel I have the answer to, but then you can correct me if I'm wrong. If you had to pick one Star Wars planet to go on a vacation, which one would it would be? And what kind of activities would you do there? Now, before you answer, I'm just making a wild guess. Is it going to be indoor? Just because you love woods? Yes. That, it <laughs> the was. is obliging I, to my answer. Yeah, dang it. Well, I was thinking about tattooing because you have the most sizely pub crawl. You oh, know, you could go yeah. through there and do that. They have like speeder bike races through the sand, but... You know, I burn going to the mailbox, so that's a bit too hot for me. And so I would choose indoor. Ewoks are cute, first of all. Uh -huh. They're kind of tribally, so they mind their own business. They're fun. They seem to party at night. Yeah. They got night cool lights in the trees. You know, you could do some zip lining. Oh, maybe yeah. do a speeder bike tour. Learn how to. I mean, seems like there's a lot of things to do there. So I you're right. Cannot. Yeah. I cannot agree more. I love those adventures. And I just hope my parents are listening to this podcast and then make me do zip planning next time when I go to a good place or a mountain. So, <laughs> yes, you have to challenge yourself. You can't grow without experience, Rhea. I'm sure. with your parents on that one. <laughs> just check the buckles real good. <laughs> I love this. Okay, so I think we're going to discuss more about this offline. <laughs> I'm okay. coming on to our next question. Okay. Now, if your life was a story or a movie, which one would it would be and why? Oh, my life is a story and a movie. Man. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I'm in this limbo spot. Great question, Shreya, because I'm in life limbo. At 50, you go into life limbo. It's like, <laughs> I right now. So... <laughs> been a lot of movies so far sometimes I feel I don't know all right now you're going to get me on old movie I just told you I was 50 so the math is over okay everyone for those of you who know the movie money pit I'm not building a new house but I got some things I need to do in it and it's just too expensive and it's going to take me weeks and weeks so I kind of feel relative there mm -hmm. darn it there was a movie about Costa Rica and she's just kind of uh, she looks about 50 if we're going to be honest <laughs> finding yourself and you know just finding a new relaxed way of living that's what I'm looking for right now and I would like to do it in Costa Rica so it's kind of kind of that I have to get you the name of the movie it's slipped me that's okay that's I think you're already living a movie I don't think so that ever I've met you and I would wonder I just feel your life is a movie and every time I'm on a call with you it feels <laughs> like I'm in a movie and I'm always laughing or smiling <laughs> Well, it feels like I'm at work. I don't know what movie you think I'm in. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, now there's one question I had, and I had this in me for like always, and I wanted to know that perception. So, okay. if we could switch places for a day, considering me being the customer and you being the CSM from what fix, what would be your reaction and what do you think that maybe you can do different. Well, you know, and I would like to bring you some useful feedback, but you're pretty good, Shreya. I mean, you're right on top of all the things that I forget. You remind me of all the things. You're on point. You're targeted. I mean, you do really great work. How fast you are with, with things. And, you know, we can be light and talk and whatever. And when it's time to talk business, you put the stuff on. It takes me like five minutes to find all the stuff to get it back. But you're right on point. So just the the way you handle my team, Kirsten and I, business when it's needed and personal when it's not. I I can't give you any other feedback. Oh my God. Dawn's a personally thank you so much. So to all my listeners, Dawn is like the sweetest person and she's someone who is always motivating me. So if you see me smiling at work, you know, it's because of customers like Dawn and Kirsten. So I'm really thankful for that. <laughs> but, you know, coming to the work part of it and uh, during this whole process, you know, since the time we have you, Dawn, I have learned a lot from you and Kirsten. 
often and really in terms of business, how things operate. So to begin with, let's understand how are banks using digital adoption to provide customers with seamless access to their accounts. And this is something I always wanted to know and understand from a business perspective. Well, and, and our perspective for helping business customers, because, mm-hmm. you know, you, you can apply what fix to customer interface systems. Now, we haven't done that just yet. We're kind of taking, I wouldn't say baby steps. Our first step was a baby step. Then we took a big step. And, you know, our next step will, of course, be to start to invite this tool and its services to our customers. So we're not there yet as far as what they can touch, but what they can experience is how we touch what fix, how we work with what fix. And what that brings them is efficiency. You know, it it brings them confidence because when you want to work with someone, especially when it's related to your money, right? Your money is your livelihood. It's your family's livelihood. It's an important thing, right? And so when you go to a place that is handling your money, if you see a lack of confidence or a lack of ability, something takes a long time, which kills the confidence you have, that already builds the initial framework to not the best interaction that you can have. And so our way of touching customers at this moment is to offer our employees the ammunition they need to handle whatever scenario is going to come at them. And of course, it's only as good as we can fortify it. But If I know, even brand new, coming out of training, if Mm -hmm. I know that I can find how to enroll this person in a CD, maybe I didn't retain Mm -hmm. that in class. And if I was in class, Mm -hmm. that would be a true statement, y'all. I don't really know how to do it, Mm -hmm. but I don't want my customer to see that. I don't want my manager Mm -hmm. to see that either, but I have this resource and I can say, all right, Mr. Smith, let's take care of that CD for you now. I'm going to hit my little workflow and I'm going to go just go do that. And that creates right there a self-confidence and the efficiency that we did not have to call our manager or our trainer to say, I don't remember how to do this or look it up in the manual for five or six minutes. Meanwhile, the customer's like, "Mm, where's the other guy? Does he Mm -hmm. he know? So the bank felt like, look, we have so many systems. Every company does, you know, it's not, it's not just for banks or whatever. We have so many systems and what we can do for our employees, which also is for our customers, is to give them some sort of help. So this is the help we invested in. And so far, we think that is making the positive impact, whether it's for reputation, whether it's for efficiencies and comfort, we do feel like we are making that for our customer. And in a banking industry where competition is pretty high, we got a lot of banks, right? You can bank your money with anybody. So now you got to figure out who do you want to bank your money with and why? And if it becomes a comfort and confidence thing, which it usually Mm -hmm. is, that's how we've done it for now. So so nicely articulated, Dawn, you know, you spoke about the self-confidence that you have once you're able to do those processes right. So again, in this personalized banking experience, how does digital adoption enable banks to offer more personalized services to their customers? Really, it's similar, honestly, Mm -hmm. because, you know, you can offer more products and that's that's part of the competition is offering more products, offering more services. And when you're going to offer those things, you need to be able to provide those things and your employees are the ones that need to do that, right? They're the ones yeah. that need to provide it. And so with what fix, we feel like we can put more resources yeah. at their fingertips in yeah. order to accomplish that. It's right there. We can offer that. That change management, you know, like a beacon or something, that change mm-hmm. management feature mm-hmm. in itself helps people pivot, you know, mm-hmm. and that in line helps them to, to deliver the service that they're intended to deliver and that they want to deliver in the right way. And you spoke of change management. So can you give me an example of how customer data is being utilized to enhance the banking experience? I know you spoke about Beacon, but what is your take in terms of other features that's there? There are tips. There's one right now where there's a certain population that needs a little more 
help with fulfilling a process. You know, we got this section that's fulfilling a process wonderfully. And we have this group that just needs a little bit more reminder that you have to do this process. So, you know, because it's not something they have to do all the time. But mm -hmm. like those tips, we can stick a tip up there mm -hmm. and leave it. And they have to read it and have to get rid of it. Yeah. And that's that's by design, you know, so that this is such a crucial piece. We don't want you just skipping it or saying, I don't know. But it, it's those kind of tips mm -hmm. and the, you know, the workflows. I mean, those are amazing. You cannot expect someone to remember all mm -hmm. of these processes, right? Yeah. You got all these products, all these processes, and you have laws and regulations that cross away. How much can an actual person recall on that stuff? And that's what What Fix yeah. provides right there. We haven't done a whole lot of task lists yet. Uh, yeah. We're going to, and that's going to yeah. be part of our onboarding and new hire. And that's going to create a better feeling of what we know they're walking out with and that they've done those things. So there is a lot of checks and balances to help someone, but also to know where they're at and what they're doing. How can we help some more? I don't know if I answered your question or just went off on a new direction. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. You know, you answered on point. And there is one thing that I have always wondered and that's something you know even during my childhood I always wanted to understand you know earlier we would typically go to bank to get certain things done and now everything is digitalized you know and we have changed everything altogether so what role does digital adoption play in kind of bridging the gap between the traditional banking and modern banking services you know we talk about UPI we talk about one-click payment we don't really have to go to the bank to get certain statements and everything is just done while we are there sitting. We have those kind of walkthroughs you spoke of. This is how you, I can get the statement from this particular portal, which is great. So what is your take on this particular topic of moving from a traditional banking to the modern banking service altogether? I think for thinking about the customer perspective, I'm not sure because we haven't really launched yeah. two customers just yet. I'm not sure where a positive impact from that direction <laughs> is, you know, how we're helping them to be more efficient other than helping us to be mm -hmm. more efficient with them. Mm -hmm. Now, our customer care center, they help the online banking, they help the branches with some of the systems. So it does mm -hmm. help our call efficiency rate, which also helps cranky callers to not be so cranky when they come in. It's like yeah. our, our call center folks, they're required to know all of it. I always tell people, and it's been this way my entire career life in all other companies, is that the call services center yeah. is the hardest job. It's the hardest job because they get the most of the attitudes across yeah. the board. The people that won't go into the branch, the people that mean to call, the people that are more fierce just because they're on the phone. What they need in order to avoid that kind of thing is their tools at the ready. Something they can work on right then and there and not waste this customer's time any more than they absolutely have to. That makes them comfortable and the customer comfortable. So right now, from that perspective, that is how we're helping them is we just know how to get where we're supposed to get quicker and correctly. We do way less tickets that go in the wrong direction, because how efficient are those? Mm -hmm. You know, you've got a customer that's now waiting five days on what should be an easy process or question, but it's gone all over the place. And so that's not creating a great relationship with that customer. So this is how what fix is helping us. It's giving us these things to mm -hmm. make that impact at the beginning. You articulated it so well, Dawn, you know, because I have been in this situation like a couple of days back, you know, looking for an information which you're not able to get on time. So while you were speaking about it, I was really able to feel that because I have faced those kind of challenges while I was on a call with the support executive and probably I was cranky. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's a true incident. Mm -hmm. And as a person delivering that support, I want to give you all the information you need. I just want to, because that's my job. And mm -hmm. as a person, that's what I want to do. And so if I can't do that, and I know I'm creating this rocky relationship with my customer, mm -hmm. that's going to contain a little drama, you know, some emotions yeah. that aren't cool. Nobody wants that. 
and, and everybody wants to work with as little possibility of that as possible. So as a bank, we had decided, look, we need to help our employees keep that situation comfortable for them. This was how we figured out how to do that because people need help learning and they can't learn it all and regurgitate it all. They need to be able to find it so that they can do their jobs and feel good about it. So you kind of actually answered my next question that I had for you was in what ways are the digital channels being used to improve customer support and engagement? You know, you spoke some of it, but anything else you would like to share on those lines? Well, if we're not talking about so much the customer interaction and our employees interaction at that time, you know, working in the flow of work, I kind of just get into it. So I, I didn't mention how long we've been with what fix about a year and a half now. So we're still kind of new, still doing some baby steps and things like it, you know, it took us a little while to do the unique user identification. Mm -hmm. That's important, everybody. And then the role segmentation, also important. If you want to look at numbers, to kind of see what your work is doing, do those things. But once we finally did that, we got had to get all comfortable. Once we did that, we can actually see what some of this data is doing. And so from our perspective of helping our employees with this tool and product, which helps the customers with that, this is a tool that gives us also the resources we need to help that fan out like that. So, I mean, there's a lot of things great about this tool. <laughs> I'm not being paid to say it. I just really like it. <laughs> I think it's yes. the way. This is the That's way. That's so sweet of you, Dawn. <laughs> but okay, again, any final thoughts or advice for banks looking to embrace digitalization to improve their customer service? Any final take on that? You know, banks and every other company, because for the exact same thing that I said, we, the expectation on the human being to have all of this knowledge and be able to go from system to system mm -hmm. to system, although some can do it and some are just fine, not mm -hmm. everybody is. And so the way of the world is more, more, more. And in order to handle the more, 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 you need the resource. And so I would say for banks and, and all companies, watch the load that you're giving your employees and that expectation. And if you want to succeed and have the same quality, you have to give the tool, the future tool. This is a future tool because I do not believe in any way that the learning and development field is going to ever go back to a classroom majority style. That's not the realistic way anymore. It is electronic way and a digital adoption. It is, it's important. It's important. Thank you so much, Dawn. That's so nice of you and to be able to articulate it well because I think that is where we are trying to bridge the gap in terms of understanding what more that we can provide. And traditional, again, to some extent, we are moving towards the whole digitalization, not just in training, I would say, at every platform. So, you know, this is really important. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, the way you answered it, it's really great. And the kind of business value that you teach me over a period of time is something I get to learn every day. With. I would not have heard about those kind of challenges earlier, especially in the banking sector when I speak. So that's extremely great. And thank you so much for all the knowledge. Yeah, you're welcome. Glad I could pass them on. <laughs> Sometimes I just pass on costumes and humor. <laughs> like that guy at the start. <laughs> yes. But okay, so yeah, but I think that's all I have from my side. And here we are to end yet another episode of the Digital Adoption Show. But before parting, I want to tell you guys something that Dawn would be representing Vortex at Dreamforce. Woohoo! So tune in if you are visiting San Francisco because I am. So, any thoughts for your audience, Dawn, before we part ways? For, let's see, thoughts for my audience. These are the same thoughts as I give all my audiences when I do this stuff at work, <laughs> when I produce their WebExes, I do it this way, and it's the same for you guys. <laughs> for those of you who are current on your Star Wars, <laughs> Shreya, yeah, I know. you have assignments to do. Anyway, this, this is what I leave you with. You know, be kind, everybody. Be kind to one another because this is the way. This is the way. And everybody should be watching Star Wars. Okay, audience, that's all. You know, we had 
from our today's podcast. Tune in next time for more insightful discussions. And thanks for our listeners who joined us today. Really appreciate the time. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Thank you.